Dear learners and listeners, Namaskar. I am Dr. Shweta and today we are going to talk about Biological and Cultural Shaping of Mind and Behavior Part 1. Let us discuss that how the biology as well as the culture helps in shaping of our mind and behavior. We often wonder that how do we behave in a variety of ways. We have seen that sometimes we feel very happy but on the other times we feel sad. Similarly, sometimes we feel very confident but the other times we feel nervous. It is very important to know that what is actually controlling our mind and behavior. The equipment with which we are born which is the brain, nervous system and the sensory motor system is central to the functioning of organism. We are able to work because of these systems in our body. But what was happening in the earlier times? Earlier, there was a belief that there is some inner spirit in all of us that is controlling our behavior. But today, we all know that our actions and body movements take place in an environment and are jointly determined by the socio-cultural environment and the nervous system. We are born in a culture which is already in existence and our nervous system acts like an engine in the automobile that controls every movement and speed of the vehicle that is our body and behavior. What are the objectives of today's program? At the end of today's program, you will be able to relate the connections between evolution, heredity and environment as well as Today, we are going to describe the structure and functions of cell and neuron. Evolution, heredity and environment. That is, how did we evolve? What are the genes that we have inherited? And how is the environment influencing all of us? The experts in biology believe that the organisms existing today are the outcomes of the process of evolution that has taken place in the course of a long span of time spanning over several million years. The idea of evolution was given by an English biologist named Charles Darwin. According to this view, adaptation to the environment is central to the process of evolution. The traits and behaviors which enable an organism to survive are retained and others are extinguished. It is known as the process of natural selection which means we retain only those traits that help us to survive and other traits are extinguished from the organism. So we can see that how the man has evolved over the Years. But what are the features that distinguish human beings from other species? The first feature is called bipedalism. What is bipedalism? It indicates our ability to walk upright. The second feature is encephalization, which indicates the increase in brain size and proportion of specialized brain tissues. The third and very important feature is the development of language because we all know that we humans are privileged to talk, to speak out. This ability is undoubtedly a key to effective communication and cultural achievement of human beings. This was about how we are different from other organisms. Let us talk about heredity. What is heredity? Heredity refers to the genetic endowment that a human body inherits from her parents. It is often known as biological blueprint. A person's genetic potential or genetic code interacts with the environment to influence and shape the pattern of behavior. So this was about heredity. Let us also discuss about very important aspect that controls our 
mind and behavior which is environment environment includes the physical and social surroundings in which a person lives grows and conducts himself or herself the context of family school and community within which a person lives interacts with the genetic characteristics to determine the pattern of behavior displayed by him or her we can see that how we get influenced by the environment around us we all know that our habits are very much influenced by the environment in which we live in now this was all about the evolution heredity and environment but a very important aspect of today's program is to make you understand that how the mind functions have you ever seen that how a building is made it is made brick by brick so all the bricks together form a particular structure in the same manner our body is built up of different cells as the brick is the smallest unit in a building so is a cell the smallest unit in a human body each living being whether it be a plant animal or human being is made up of these small units which are called cells there are certain differences between the cells of different living beings as well as the cells in different parts of a living organism all cells contain a fluid which is called cytoplasm and a nucleus and are enclosed in a cell membrane operations within the cells and the coordination among various cells make the life possible the life of all living beings is therefore based upon the working of the cells so this is one of the picture of a cell that how the cell looks like first of all let us discuss about the neuron the cells that compose the nervous system are known as neurons and glia the neurons or nerve cells transmit information which is known as impulse from one location to another for example sometimes you appreciate a sunset you enjoy music you think of somebody who is living at a distant place you try to find out solutions to a particular problem all these acts reflect the coordinated actions of thousands or millions of neurons that are there in our body nerve cells collect information from the environment by means of receptors that is they receive the information from the environment and then they combine the information as well as make the action possible the neurons also store information and lead to behavior it is very important to understand that when we are talking about the neurons are storing information you should know that when we are repeating something again and again the neurons in the nervous system or in the brain get strengthened we'll talk about the connections between neurons that how are they transferring information from one cell body to the other cell body neurons in the central nervous system which is often known as cns are of various shapes and sizes but most neurons may have features in common there are three main structures of a neuron the first structure is known as the cell body which is also called as soma the second is known as the dendrites and the third important structure is known as the exons i'll show you picture of how a neuron looks like now what is soma first of all let us understand soma or the cell body is the largest part of the neuron it is regulating and controlling the metabolism and maintenance of the entire cell the soma also receive impulses from other neurons 
the cell body contains the nucleus that manufactures the chemicals used to transmit signal now when i am saying that soma also receives impulses that means it is not only one soma but there are lot of cell bodies or the somas in the entire nervous system that are connected to each other and that are sending signals to the brain this is how a soma or the cell body looks like it has a nucleus dendrites exons now what are dendrites first of all the dendrites are branches that extends from the cell body and spread out in complex ways that is it is branches like branches of trees you can imagine it is it is branches like structure that spread out in complex ways the neurons receive much of their input through dendrites via synaptic connections from other neurons the cell sending information releases a chemical that influences the activity of the receiving cell information passes from the synaptic terminal to the dendrite or cell body but does not go the other way that is it either goes in the forward direction or it does not go at all so if you want to understand that how the cell functions let us see first of all it is written that these are dendrites i said that dendrites receive information from the environment and it is branch like structures it is very clear that they are branch like structures inside it is nucleus now what happens when these dendrites receive information from outside this information travels along this yellow path yellow path it is known as it is just to show you the color is just to make you understand so it is a differentiated color this yellow line depicts the exon of a cell and this exon is surrounded by a melanin sheath now what happens when the dendrite receives information from outside it travels along this exon and reaches the exon terminal i just talked to you about a chemical which is produced to send informations to other cells so the chemical is produced at the exon terminals the exon is a long fiber that leads away from the cell body you can see that it is leading away from the cell body cell body is there and it is going in the forward direction the exons send signals to the dendrites dendrites of the other cells other neurons or to muscles and glands the exons make neural pathways in the central nervous system the exons are insulated by melanin sheath melanin sheath is made up of glial cell now the nerve impulse how does it carry information an information is carried through a series of electrical impulses that travel from one neuron to another neuron i just discussed that the cell receives information by means of dendrite so if you remember the dendrite is receiving the information and it is traveling along the exon so it is an electric impulse that is going on an information is carried through a series of electrical impulses that travel from one neuron to another neuron these are called nerve impulses they are sent to the specific areas of the brain where sensation takes place the exons or nerve fibers do not carry sensations like pain or cold the sensations occur only when the information reaches the brain for example when you are looking at or when you are listening to this program there is a sensation which is going on in your brain cells and you you are able to understand only because the 
signal is reaching your brain. So this is how a nerve impulse travels. We have already seen this uh, diagram that is there is a dendrite, a cell body, it has a nucleus. Now it is the information or the message is traveling along the exon. It is an electrical impulse and it is reaching at the exon terminals and from these exon terminals it will make connections with the other cells. I am repeatedly talking about that the nerve impulse travels from one neuron to the another neuron. But how does this happen? This happens with the help of synapse. Let us understand how does synapse help in the transformation of information from one neuron to the another neuron. The region where impulses cross from one neuron to the other are called synapses. The synapses are junctions between the neuron, that is the connections where two neurons meet. Through the gap at synapse and that gap is known as synaptic cleft, signals are transmitted from one neuron to another neuron. The sending side of the synapse is exon terminal, whereas the receiving side of the synapses is the tips of the branching dendrites. The chemical substances that facilitate the transmission of the signals are called neurotransmitters. Let us understand that how does synapse help in the transformation of information from one neuron to another neuron with the help of this diagram. As I said that the sending side of the synapse is the exon terminal. So that means if the yellow portion is one neuron and the green portion is another neuron, then the sending side of the synapse is the exon terminal and it is the exon terminal. And at the exon terminal, there are certain sacs where neurotransmitters are filled in. And now when the nerve impulse reaches at the exon terminal, that is at the end of a neuron, then the neurotransmitters get released and they make connections with the dendrites of the another neuron. That is in this point it is clear sending side is this exon terminal and from this point again clear that the receiving side of the synapses is the tips of the branching dendrites that is this green portion and these are the tips of the branching dendrite. That means these signals are reaching here and from here the neurotransmitter is getting released and it gets makes connection with the help of this gap which is known as synaptic cleft and it meets or it makes connections with the receiving side of the neuron which is known as the dendrites that is dendrites of the another neuron. There are different types of neurons depending upon the functions the two major types of neurons are the receptor neurons and the second is the motor neurons. Now as the name suggests receptor neurons bring information that is they receive information from the environment into the nervous system. Such information is brought through the senses. The another type of neurons is known as the motor neurons. Now the job of the receptor neurons is to receive information but the job of the motor neurons is to carry out orders of the brain for muscular movement. That is receptor is receiving information from the outside to the brain but motor is carrying the orders from the brain for the muscular movement such as chewing, walking, writing and so on which are under our conscious control. The reflex actions are mediated by the spinal cord. Now these reflex actions for example we have often noticed that when we touch a hot surface we immediately take out our hand from that hot surface. That is one reflex action and what is making that possible is the neurons in the spinal cord. Breathing and eye blinking are involuntary actions 
and these involuntary actions are controlled by the motor neuron. I hope today I have helped you in understanding that how we evolved, how the heredity influences us and the environment shapes our behavior as well as how the nerve impulse sends information to the brain and receives command from the brain in order to control our behavior. This was all for today. Thank you.